It's been a hell of a week, man. I'm yeah. telling you, <laughs> I haven't jumped off a bridge yet. But well, that's uh, good. Can I? Yeah, that is good. <laughs> I like living. Um, but I have to be honest with you guys. After mm -hmm. uh, this week made me want to start drinking again. Yeah. And I've been sober for 37 years. Ooh. <laughs> that's how well, crazy this week is. Keep been. it going, man. <laughs> So we're going to dive into it tonight. Um, as you guys well know, uh, I'm a volunteer on the Kennedy 24 presidential campaign, and mm -hmm. things have been pretty chaotic around the potential vice presidential running mate that Kennedy's going to name. Uh, on the 26th of this month, he'll be in Oakland, California to make that announcement. I think it's at 2 p.m. Eastern time if you want to tune in. I'm sure there will be a live stream. Um, but uh, we're going to talk about why he chose Oakland and get into some of the media speculation because the mainstream media has been in a feeding frenzy all week about this. Um, uh, who's it going to be? And apparently there was a short list, an alleged short list, that was leaked to the New York Times, I guess by somebody in the campaign. Uh, I don't know. It's, it's all speculation, but the media seized on that list, particularly the name Aaron Rodgers, um, and they really went wild with that one. Um, mm -hmm. And then just last night, Bobby Kennedy was down in Austin, my old stomping grounds, my hometown, and uh, he put all those rumors to rest. And, uh, well, I will just show you what Kennedy had to say. We'll get it straight from the horse's mouth. I had a friend who was there last night, actually. And, uh, well, here's what Bobby says about it. I am going to name a vice president on the 26th in Oakland. We have an extraordinary person. I can't tell you who it is. Uh, but it's really, uh, it's, some, it's not any of the people they've been talking about. <laughs> it's somebody that is going to surprise people. And, uh, and I think that the country is really going to fall in love with it. How's that for a tease? Yeah. <laughs> well, the suspense is killing me. It's killing me too. <laughs> and of course, everyone's back channeling me and asking me all week, Lori, come on, tell us who it's yeah. going to be. And, and are like, you going to tell us who it is? Come on, spill the beans. I, I don't know shit and I ain't saying shit. Oh. <laughs> I mean, they'll kill me. It, it, I, I, if I knew, would I tell you? Come on. I, I, I love the suspense as much as everybody. This yeah. is fun. It's it's well, chaotic, exactly it's hectic, want. it's right. stressful, but it's fun. What do you yeah. guys think of the uh, okay? The do, you, just yeah. tell, do you know, and you're just not telling us, or <laughs> or like, are you do you not know? And would I believe you either way? You wouldn't believe me, Rick. You wouldn't believe me. <laughs> See, he's using our friendship against me now. He wants you know. Come on, you can tell me. I'm your best buddy here at Maverick News. Can't yeah. you tell me? There's nobody listening. Nobody watching. You can just nah, whis just whisper. It. Just whisper it. Mm -hmm. How about like how about initials? Initials. <laughs> Sounds like. <laughs> well, I do have a hint in the private chat, Rick. A potential oh. hint. If you look in the private chat, I dropped a video for you. Do you see that? There are, you know, a lot of people are asking, why Oakland? Yeah. Of all the, you know, it's a big country. Why why Oakland? Kennedy lives in L.A. Why not L.A.? Why Oakland? And I thought, well, it's Kamala Harris's hometown. So that mm -hmm. in itself is kind of a thumb in the eye to, to uh, the vice president right now. But let's see here. Hmm. Whose name has been bandied about more than anybody else as a potential Veep? And who does everybody want? I can tell you for a year now, everyone's been begging for one person to join him on the ticket who seems like an obvious fit. And who, let's see, who destroyed Kamala Harris in a certain debate yeah. back in 2020? Hmm. But I think everyone knows who I'm talking about. Just yeah. wanted to 
uh, refresh your memory. It's been almost four years since. Told ya! I told ya! Uh, <laughs> you have criticized Hillary Clinton as the quote personification of the rot that has sickened the Democratic Party. What is the rot you see in the Democratic Party? That our Democratic Party, unfortunately, is not the party that is of, by, and for the people. It's a par it is a party that has been and continues to be influenced by the foreign policy establishment in Washington, represented by Hillary Clinton and others' foreign policy, by the military-industrial complex and other greedy corporate interests. I'm running for president to be the Democratic nominee that rebuilds our Democratic Party, takes it out of their hands, and truly puts it in the hands of the people of this country, a party that actually hears the voices of Americans who are struggling all across this country, and puts it in the hands of veterans and fellow Americans who are calling for an end to this ongoing Bush-Clinton-Trump foreign policy doctrine of regime change wars, overthrowing dictators and other countries, needlessly sending my brothers and sisters in uniform into harm's way to fight in wars that actually undermine our national security and have cost us thousands of American lives. These are wars that have cost us as American taxpayers trillions of dollars since 9-11 alone, dollars that have come out of our pockets, out of our hospitals, out of our schools, out of our infrastructure needs. As president, I will end this foreign policy, end these regime change wars work to end this new Cold War and arms race and instead invest our hard-earned taxpayer dollars actually into serving the needs thank, of the American people thank you, right here Woman. at home. Senator Harris, any response? Oh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I, I think that um, it, it's unfortunate that we have someone on the stage who is attempting to be the Democratic nominee for President of the United States, who during the Obama administration spent four years full time on Fox News criticizing President Obama. That's who ridiculous. Has spent full time, That's who ridiculous. has spent full time criticizing people on this stage as affiliated with the Democratic Party. When Donald Trump was elected, not even sworn in, buddied up to Steve Bannon to get a meeting with Donald Trump in the Trump Tower, fails to call a war criminal by what he is as a war criminal, and then spends full time during the course of this campaign, again, criticizing the Democratic Party. What we need on the stage on, in the November is someone who has the ability to win. And by that, we need someone on that stage who has the ability to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Donald Trump and someone who has the ability to rebuild the Obama coalition and bring the party and the nation together. I believe I am that candidate. Thank you, Senator. Um, Congress, yes. Congresswoman Gabbard, I'll give you a chance well, to respond. What Senator Harris is doing is unfortunately continuing to traffic in lies and smears and innuendos because she cannot challenge the substance of the argument that I'm making, the leadership and the change that I'm seeking to bring in our foreign policy, which only makes me guess that she will, as president, continue the status quo, continue the Bush-Clinton-Trump foreign policy of regime change wars, which is, is deeply destructive. This is personal to me because I served in Iraq. I left my seat in the state legislature in Hawaii, volunteered to deploy to Iraq, where I served in a medical unit where every single day I saw the terribly high human cost of war. I take very seriously the responsibility that the president has to serve as commander-in-chief, to lead our armed forces, and to make sure always, no, I'm not going to put party interests first. I will put the Thank interests you. of the American people Thank you, Congresswoman. I want, to, I want to briefly give Senator Harris a final second to respond. I believe that uh, what our nation needs right now is a nominee who can speak to all people. I spent my entire career standing mostly in a courtroom speaking five words, Kamala Harris for the people. And it was about all the people, regardless of their race, regardless of their gender, regardless of where they live geographically, regardless of the party with which they're registered to vote or the language their grandmother speaks. We need someone on this debate stage in November who has the ability to unify the country and to win the election. Thank and I believe, again, I am that candidate. I don't know about you guys, but I want a rematch. Yeah. Please let it be Tulsi. Please, God, let it be Tulsi.
please. So, so I, you're you're saying that you, this is not like official. You can't say no. For sure. God, no, 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 no. Yeah. Absolutely, positively, yeah. not get that thought right out of your head. I am not starting another rumor. I'm just saying it's Oakland. I'm just saying that everybody, everybody on this campaign from day one wants Tulsi. And I'm just saying that on episode one of this program, Strange Bedfellows, last May, our very first guests, Rick, you might remember, uh, were the comedy duo of the Jackman brothers, Eric and Mike. And uh, of course, they've both been involved with our campaign. Eric Jackman, was uh, he's been with us since day one, since before day one. He's in New Hampshire and also worked on Tulsi's campaign in 2020. So it just so happened that this week, my friend Eric Jackman sat down with Tulsi Gabbard and had a wide-ranging one-on-one interview, which is coming soon. It has not been posted yet. So I'm going to give a plug to Jackman Radio. Hope you'll go subscribe to Eric's channel. That interview is coming soon, and he definitely uh, talked to her about this possibility. Did Bobby ask you to be his vice president? Uh, I'm going to let Bobby Kennedy speak for himself. I don't know what was said, you guys. I'm just saying it'll be a real interesting interview when it drops. So be on the lookout for that. Just wanted to plant the seed i'm just like johnny appleseed just well the, the only thing i would say is that uh here again and this is all speculation but it does seem like she has a certain amount of uh, traffic associated with the trump campaign i mean that's i mean that's is what it is um and um, so i don't know I, i've had a lot of people tell me that the, the odds of getting tulsi as much as we would like that is probably not going to happen now that don't mean it can't um i would tell you too that a lot of this speculation about the the vice president no matter how good this person is typically what a vice president announcement does is it gives the campaign a little bit of a bump if it's a good pick tulsi would certainly do that i'm sure for rfk but it doesn't go much beyond that i i don't know that I remember a time when a vice presidential pick won an election. It, it just doesn't. Now, by the same token, there's an old saying about baseball that, uh, you know, you can't win this series in April, but you can lose it. And uh, the, the vice presidential picks are very much like that. Uh, you, you can't necessarily win with the vice presidential pick, but you can lose the election. Um, there's been a couple of them. Uh, probably the, the most notable was Sarah Palin, but there's been a few others. I think that a, that a good solid pick like Tulsi would certainly give it a bump, and I think it would give it some legitimacy going into giving the the, uh, the candidacy some legitimacy going into the fall. But that's probably as about as much as you can ask for it. Uh, when people were talking about Aaron Rodgers, and I had some people really coming after me on Twitter, like uh, when I said <laughs> that a pick like Aaron Rodgers could ruin the campaign, it could. Uh, I had a lot of people coming after me about, oh, they wouldn't do that. He's a man of courage and quarterbacks are smart. <laughs> no, uh, no, it would have been devastating to this campaign. Uh, and from what I understand, he has been ruled out. Now, that's not, not here again. If you're a football fan, you're a Green Bay fan, and you love Aaron Rodgers, that's fine. Well, he's with the Jets now. Yeah, New York and, but Jets. His, leg- his legacy is always going to be in Green Bay, unless he takes the, the mm. Jets to the Super Bowl. But his legacy is always going to be with Green Bay, just like Brett Favre and and and, and others. But uh, yeah, I, I think that would have been devastating. It, you know, I, the punchlines would write themselves. You wouldn't even have to sit down and and, and it, you know. So it, it would have been. Devastating. I don't think people found it funny. I mean, well, well, a lot not, of yeah, our donors it, 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 were quite spooked by that yes. choice, and uh, they let Bobby hear it this week too. Yeah, yeah, and uh, you know, and some of it might be unfair to. Aaron Rodgers, a lot of people went after him, and may, he may or may not have asked for this. I don't know. Uh, and and, and I, I hate to see a lot of grief thrown his way when maybe he really wasn't, you know, decided that he was going to even jump in this ring if he had the opportunity. Uh, but I can tell you that uh, as, as professional athletes go, even within the football community, he is not universally loved. I mean, he, he's, he's just simply not, uh, 
you know, somebody like Roger Staubach or Walter Payton. He's not people who are universally loved. He's not that. And, uh, you know, when you when you look at uh, the, the legacy of some of these players, one of what you have to remember is the really good football players that are like I'm, I'm from Canton, Ohio, which is where the Professional Football Hall of Fame is. And uh, I've seen over the years, a lot of them come, come and go. I've rubbed shoulders with some of them. A lot of the l- local people here have some with good experiences, some with bad. But for the most part, the ones that really leave a mark are people like Vince Lombardi who had an ideal about the approach to the game and about commitment and sacrifice that you could apply to anything in your life. Somebody told me a a story here not too long ago about Vince Lombardi that I really liked. And it's kind of like today when we ask who's the best uh, basketball player, is it LeBron or is it it Michael Jordan? Uh, The the, the question was about football. Somebody asked him, who do you think the the greatest football player who ever lived was? And back in his time, he might have said, well, maybe... Johnny Unitas or Jim Brown or one of those kind of people. And his answer was the greatest football player who ever lived never touched a football because he never tried. Okay. That kind of an answer, that kind of an attitude, that's not Aaron Rodgers. Now, that's nothing mm-hmm. against him, but he's, yeah, not I know what that, you mean. He, he is not that inspiring. And he's so, known to have quite an ego. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, so I just, and, and he's, he's kind of, kind of got that smug mumbling out of the side smirk of his mouth. All of the, I, I just, uh, yeah, I, I just don't know. Uh, that's not something that would have been good for the campaign. So I, I hope that is squashed no matter who they pick. <laughs> um, so anyway, yeah, that's my, that's my take on Aaron Rodgers. So I'm glad, I hope that's not, yeah, I hope that's. Well, I hadn't even that. asked you about Aaron Rodgers, but thank you for sharing. <laughs> yeah. We were talking about Tulsi Gabbard, and I have to ask Rick, because Rick is a conservative, and much of our Maverick News audience is very pro-Trump, and there's been a lot of interesting signals, it seems, being sent from Team Trump. It looks to me, anyway, like they've been heavily courting Tulsi, whining, dining her, and she was at Mar-a-Lago last week. She was on uh, Donald Trump Jr.'s podcast this week just a couple of days ago. And uh, I don't have a clip from that, sadly, but uh, you can find it on Rumble. But uh, Rick, I wanted to get your thoughts on Tulsi Gabbard and, you know, obviously both teams want her. Team Kennedy wants her. Team Trump is sending signals. I don't know if he's sincere. My theory is is Team Trump's trying to block Tulsi from coming over to Kennedy's ticket because yeah. Trump knows that that'll take votes from him. So I think it's all a big head fake myself. I think that Trump is kind of dangling that carrot in front of Tulsi saying, come with me. But then at the Republican at the Republican convention this summer, he will ultimately pick a Republican or pick somebody else. But what do you think, Rick? Do you do you think she'll go with Kennedy or Trump? What are your thoughts on all this? I don't know where she'll go because you're faking me out with your <laughs> double super quadruple head fake. And she's saying all just what you just said. So I don't know, <laughs> but I do know this wherever she ends up, she's an asset. If she goes with Trump, Trump's going to win the election. If she goes with Kennedy, he becomes a serious threat because that's a winning ticket. Absolutely. That's serious. Jesse Ventura, Aaron Rodgers not so serious. Tulsi Gabbard, very serious. She's a serious candidate. She's credible. She has political experience. She can, she um, has appeal across the political spectrum. She can pull from the Democrat side. She can pull from the conservative side, the MAGA side. She uh, pulls from, you know, the female demographic. She's strong. She's smart. She has military experience. She's just got broad appeal. As I said before, Kennedy needs to broaden his appeal, his voter appeal, not bring somebody in who's already within his little bubble, um, you know, on, on issues like vaccines or even the environment. He needs to bring somebody in like Tulsi. She's perfect for him because she comes from the Democrats, but she appeals to conservatives. So it's, that's the dream. Catch it seems right like a match made in heaven to me. It's it works for him, but it also works for Trump. Trump would be an idiot to not 
use her and put her on the ticket. He grabs her. He does the same thing. He broadens his appeal, increases his credibility. He takes votes from Kennedy. Yep, he, he, she, he certainly does. And he takes votes from Biden because she's the more palatable um, Kamala Harris, right? Like, mm. she, because she takes the, the female vote too. He wins. He wins with her. He can win with her. Kennedy could potentially become a serious threat or even win with her in the right conditions. He's still, in my view, a long shot because you have the big, you know, party machines, right? Yep. So, oh, but yeah. if something catastrophic happens, he could come up the middle and and fill the void. You never know. Politics, things can change very quickly. But she's 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 the one. I mean, and mm. she's plus plus. Hillary Clinton thinks she's a Russian agent, which is perfect because that will just drive her crazy. <laughs> And can yep. you imagine the fear that it would strike into Kamala Harris's heart? Oh, shit, I have to face her again on the debate stage. <laughs> and I think Tulsi wants that. I think she wants another shot at Kamala Harris. What do you think, Billy? Tulsi is, you know, if you were uh, designing a, a movie script, uh, Tulsi Gabbard would be the perfect uh, candidate for vice president. And actually, I... I most people would like to see her at the top of the ticket in a lot of cases. Uh, she's that good. Uh, she is very smart. Uh, I, you two haven't mentioned it, but I'll say it. She looks good on camera. You know, mm -hmm. she's hot. And that's it. That, that's, I'm, I'm not being coy that those things shouldn't matter in this world, but they do. That's she's right. She's very attractive. She's uh, very physically uh, present. If you saw her doing the uh, shooting and the, and the running and all that on the, on the target range, uh, she looks like as about of a capable of a human being that you are going to meet. And uh, she's got the whole package. And if I was her, the one thing that would concern me uh, about Trump is I would not want to get caught in another fiasco like Mike Pence did. Uh, and that would be something in the back of my mind. Uh, yes, she could become vice president. Trump is uh, uh, of a certain age, and uh, this would be his second term. So conceivably, if he won the election with her as vice president, she would be the obvious choice to be president. And then that's 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 a legitimate path. But there's also the possibility of, of a major fiasco in that administration. Um, and <laughs> I, I don't know that I, I, I would want to put myself in, in another January 6th type circus. The other right. thing that's the, the other thing here that's a wild variable uh, that could impact both Trump and RFK is this. And I'm not saying this negatively. I'm not saying this mean spirited. This is obvious. It is something that I, I don't know has been said. I'm sure the Democrats in their closed door meetings have had this meeting and had this conversation. Joe Biden is uh, one of the oldest presidents ever. I think he's the oldest. He would have to be. As a matter of fact, uh, Reagan was uh, uh, criticized because he was at the time an old president. You got to keep in mind that uh, Reagan left younger than Biden went in. True. So now here we are, another four years down from that. And if he would win the election and go to the following January, we'd be five years in with somebody who's in visible decline, rapid visible decline. I personally feel as a humanitarian that uh, Joe Biden should be enjoying the twilight of his years. He should be on the back porch. Uh, sitting with a glass of tea, uh, playing catch with the dog, whatever. I don't think that he should be under the pressure that he's under. And there's a very good possibility that Joe Biden could not necessarily survive long enough to get through the election. Uh, what's going to happen when that happens? Uh, what are happens? You, wait a minute. Are you saying yeah. that the Democrats might be considering Tulsi too? I to think I, I think anything's on the table, and I'm not even sure how that would work. <laughs> wow! I'm not even didn't sure see that how, coming. I'm not even sure how that would work. Me neither. Uh, with, you know, I, I don't know how the legalities of that work because Kamala would be uh, the obvious second choice, but uh, they don't want her. Her, her numbers. <laughs> Nobody are wants his. Kamala. <laughs> so literally less popular than Joe Biden. And you know, there's still the Michelle uh, Obama rumors. Um, I I have to say that's unlikely, but I and, and this year and nothing's off the table. The one thing that would con I have nothing against Michelle Obama, actually, but I'll tell you, the, the one thing that I have reservations about is, is regurgitating the same people. 
we had a Bush legacy. We had a Clinton legacy. And I, I don't think we want a, an Obama legacy. It, it's time for a fresh face in there. OK, and uh, certainly Kennedy fits that. Tulsi fits that. But you know what? Uh, depending on what happens with uh, uh, Joe Biden's health, either he has a, some sort of a, a problem where he's not incoherent uh, and he clearly can't go on. Or if some morning he just doesn't wake up, what happens? Are we looking at Gavin Newsom? I, I don't like him at all, but he's got the look. Uh, he, he's got the, he's he's got movie star. Look. He looks like a lost Kennedy brother. <laughs> Yes. He does. So I, I, I kind of, <laughs> in the back of my mind, I'm really kind of wondering what the what the Democrats are conjuring up because they got to know this is not sustainable for another five years. They've they've got to know. I, you would I, I think. Just, yes, you would think. But I just wanted to say, um, it, you were talking about how it's important to have a vice presidential running mate who brings people to the ticket that you don't already have. Sure. Right. Um, mm -hmm. Bobby Kennedy's are obviously already got the anti-vax vote. He's already got the, a lot of the conspiracy theory vote. Uh, so that's one of many reasons why I felt like Aaron Rodgers, for example, was not the right choice. But yeah. also, to me anyway, the main thing that matters is experience, judgment, and temperament. Yeah. And I want and we need someone who's ready to lead immediately should the president be unable to fulfill his term. I mean, yes. especially with a guy who's named Kennedy, um, mm -hmm. there's always that possibility of assassination. Also, there's the possibility of illness or impeachment. Sure. I mean, Kennedy's mm -hmm. going to have a lot of enemies in Congress if he makes it to the White House. You know that they're going to be looking for anything that they can to impeach this guy on. And they may give him the Trump treatment and try to impeach him several times in the course of, of his presidency. So it's important, vital to me, that whoever Bobby chooses, it has to be someone who is truly qualified and fit for the job. And I believe that Tulsi is the only one who meets all, checks all those boxes. You know, she's served in local government. She's served in the Congress. She's served in the military. She has great diplomatic skills and a network of contacts that she can tap. She's very well liked. Um, I could easily see her as Secretary of State as well. She'd make a, she's a great diplomat. Um, I think she'd be useful in anyone's administration and a great asset. But just for the record, for whatever my opinion's worth, which is probably nothing. <laughs> That's why I don't get paid to give it away. Uh, mm -hmm. Tulsi Gabbard is, and has always been, the obvious best choice for the campaign. This has been a Maverick Multimedia Productions.